Hello, welcome to a new section of our video course, Visualize Diamond Dataset. In the previous section, we saw exploratory data analysis with automobile data. In this section, we'll learn data visualization using ggplot2 and create different types of charts, plots, and histograms. We'll then see how to use Plotly. And finally, we'll create geo mapping. Now we move on to the first video of this section that will give you an in-depth introduction of different data visualization options we have to represent our data. In this video, we'll use the ggplot function, change colors, themes, and size, and experiment variations with the scatterplot. Every data mining project is incomplete without proper data visualization. While looking at numbers and statistics, it may well tell a similar story for the variables we are looking at by different cuts. However, when we visually look at the relationship between variables and factors, it shows a different story altogether. Hence, data visualization tells you a message that numbers and statistics fail to do that. From a data mining perspective, data visualization has many advantages, which can be summarized in three important points. Data visualization establishes a robust communication between the data and the consumer of the data. It imprints a long-lasting impact as people may fail to remember numbers, but they do remember charts and shapes. When data scales up to higher dimension, representation in numbers does not make sense, but visually it does. In this section, you'll get to know the basics of visualization, along with how to create advanced data visualization using existing libraries in R programming language. Typically, data visualization approach can be addressed in two different ways. What do you want to display to the audience? Is it comparison, relationship, or any other functionality? How do you want to display the insights? Which one is the most intuitive way of chart or graph to display the insights? Based on the preceding two points, let's have a look at the data visualization rules and theories behind each visualization. And then we're going to look at the practical aspect of implementing the graphs and charts using R script. So from a functional point of view, these are the graphs and charts which a data scientist would like the audience to look at to infer the information. Here we have segregated different graphs and charts based on their usage. This will help you take the right decision. Let's look at each of them. The first situation is where you need to do comparisons between variables. Basically, when it's needed to represent two or more categories within a variable, then these charts are used. That is, bar chart, box plot, bubble chart, etc. Then we have testing or view proportions. It's used when there is a need to display the proportion of contribution by one category to the overall level. These are the charts and graphs you could use for this purpose. There may be instances where you want to render a relationship between variables. Association between two or more variables can be shown using scatter plot, bar chart, radar chart, etc. When it's required to display the order in the variables, such as a sequence of variables, then tree diagram and tree map. When a data set contains the geographic location of different cities, countries and states' names, or longitudes and latitudes, then the following charts can be used to display visualization, and then bubble map, geo mapping, dot map and flow map are used. When you're required to display constituents of a variable and the contribution of each category level towards the overall variable, then the following charts are used. Pie chart, stacked bar chart, donut chart. In order to understand the variation in a variable across different dimensions, represented by another categorical variable, box plot, bubble chart, histogram, stem and leaf plot are used. For pattern recognition and relative importance of data points on different dimensions of a variable, these charts are used. The span chart, box plot, and histogram only give the spread of the data points across different bounds, so they're a good choice for these specific scenarios. Word cloud is a very interesting way of representing the textual data. You can use it for smart data visualization. Keeping in mind these functionalities that people use in displaying insights to the readers, we can see that one graph is referred by much functionality. In other words, one graph can be used in multiple functions to show the insights. These graphs and charts can be displayed by using various open source R packages, such as ggplot2, ggviz, rcharts, plotly, and googleviz by taking one open source dataset. In the light of these mentioned 10 points, the data visualization rules can be created to select the best representation depending on what you want to represent. Relationship between two variables can be represented using a scatter plot. Relationship between two or more variables can be represented using a bubble chart. For understanding the distribution of a single variable with a few sample size, histogram is used. For understanding the distribution of a single variable with a large sample size, density plot is used. Distribution of two variables can be represented using scatterplot. 
for representation of distribution between three variables, 3D scatterplot is used. Any variable with a timestamp, such as day, week, month, year and so on, can be represented using line chart. Time should always be on the horizontal axis, and the metric to be measured should always be on the vertical axis. Each graph should have a name and label so that the user does not have to go back to the data to understand what it is. In this section, we'll primarily focus on the ggplot2 library and plotly library. Of course, we'll cover a few more interesting libraries to create data visualization. The graphics packages in R can be organized as per these sequences. First is plotting, followed by graphic applications such as effect ordering, large data sets and trees, and graphs. Then we have graphic systems, devices, colors, and so on. A detailed explanation of the various libraries supporting the previous functionalities can be found at this web link. For a good visual object, we need more data points so that the density of the graphs can be more. In this context, we'll be using two data sets, diamonds.csv and cars93.csv to show data visualization. Now let's look into data visualization using ggplot2. There are two approaches to go ahead with data visualization, horizontally and vertically. Horizontal drill down means creating different charts and graphs using ggplot2 and vertical drill down implies creating one graph and adding different components to the graph. First we'll understand how to add and modify different components to a graph and then we'll move horizontally to create different types of charts. Let's take a look at the data set and libraries required to create data visualization. So first we'll get the library ggplot. We'll import the diamonds data set and print the columns in the diamond data set using this command. So you can see the output now. The ggplot2 library is also known as the grammar of graphics for data visualization. The process to start the graph requires a data set and two variables, and then different components of a graph can be added to the base graph using the plus sign. Let's get into creating a nice visualization using the diamonds.csv data set. We start with a basic plot. So this is the line of code for creating a basic plot of color brown 4 and using the price and carrot function of diamond.csv dataset. Now let's print the graph. In this script, diamonds is the dataset and carrot and price are the two variables. Using ggplot function, the base graph is created and adding points to the ggplot. The object is stored in object gg. Now we're going to add various components of a graph to make the ggplot more interesting. After creating the base plot, it's required to add title and label to the graph. This can be done using two functions, ggtitle or labs. So let's add the title first and click on run. Now we use labs to obtain the same plot and we add the code for it. As you can see, we get the same output for ggtitle and labs functions. Then, let's add a theme to the plot for customizing text element. Now we've added the theme function at the bottom of our script. Currently, the graph looks a little congested. To make the graph more intuitive, we need to add labels to the x and y axis, removing ticks and text from any axis to make the graph more clear. Rotating the text in any axis is required when the row name or column name contains text or a large number, which is difficult to read in full length. Let's add a few lines of code to make our graph more intuitive. So we add labels to the graph and let's run it. As you can see, the label is changed to price by carrot. Now let's try removing text and text from an axis. As you can see, the text and ticks from the y-axis are removed through the code we just added. Now let's see how we can rotate the text in an axis. This is the line of code to do that. As you can see here, the text of the x-axis is rotated by 50 degrees. Next, we step ahead to add color to the axis name. We add this line of code at the bottom of the script and run to check the output. As you can see, we have changed the color of x-axis elements to chocolate color and the y-axis colors to brown. In order to focus on any specific portion of the plot, the x-axis limit and y-axis limit can be changed. Let's add a few lines of code for it. Now, you can see in the console the number of rows removed while executing the limit on both the axes. 
If both x-axis and y-axis represent continuous data, any third variable as a factor can be introduced to the ggplot object to set legends and look at the data, how it is distributed across the factor variable. Let's see how we can set legends in the graph. So this is the line of code to add cut as the factor to the ggplot. As you run the script after adding this line of code, you can see the cut factor has been added. Now let's add another factor called color. As you run the script now, you can notice the change in the graph. Let's add another factor called clarity. Again, the graph has changed with the clarity factor. Awesome. Now we step further to add the legend title. After adding this line of code when you run the script, you'll notice that there is no title in the plot. Now let's have a look at how we can change the title name of the legend. We add these lines of code at the bottom of our script. So here we have changed the value for legend.title, color and size along with the clarity. Let's check the output. As you notice now, the title has changed to by. Clarity, the color is dark blue and the font size is 16. Now let's see how we can change the background boxes of the legend. Cool. We've changed the background boxes to dogger blue. Now we modify the size of the symbols used in the legend. Add this line of code and run the script. You can observe the size of the circles have increased to size 4. In addition to the previous visualization, it's required to connect the scatter plots and change the background. Add lines to the scatter plot in order to understand the sequence R pattern that exists between the variables which are related. Let's add code for this to our script and run. You can see that lines have been added to our scatter plot. Another important aspect of data visualization is how to display multi-dimensional cuts in a plot. For example, in the diamonds dataset, we're currently looking at the relationship between the price of the diamond and the carrot it contains. There are three more variables, which are cut, color, and clarity. It makes sense to understand if the relationship is consistent across these three variables. That means understanding if we can plot the relationship between carrot and the price of the diamond by a different cut, different color, and different clarity categories. Let's look at the distribution of the three categorical variables. Let's print the table of the three categorical variables and add lines of code for it and run it. So you can see the output in the console. Let's add a multi-variable cut to the graph. Now we run the script. In the graph, the cut variable is used to show the relationship between the carrot and the price. The number of rows selected is four to represent the graphs in a clear manner. If we add one more variable to the cut variable, that is clarity, the graph would be more intuitive and insightful. So let's do it right now. We add the code for it and run the script. So you can see that we obtained a better plot with which is more insight. While creating the graphs using a multi-dimensional cut variable, it's not necessary that all the graphs would be on the same scale. In automatic mode, these scales become a standard for all the plots. Hence, sometimes certain plots get compressed. Thus, it's required to make the graphs scale free in order to rearrange the scales based on observed values. So this is a line of code for it. With this, we can scale free graphs in multi-panels. Let's run and see the output. Here's the output for the facet wrap function. Using the facet grid option, we can display the bivariate relationship between two categorical variables using the ggplot2 library. Let's add the code for this and run our script again. Wait a second, let me enlarge it so we can have a closer look. Now, there are certain external graphical themes which can be imported to the ggplot2 function for visualization, such as library gg themes. Before we move ahead, let's import this library. You need to install GG themes. You can do this using the install package utility of RStudio, as you can see here. OK, the GG themes package is installed. Let's run this so that it's loaded. Instead of this, you can also use Tableau, which is a tool known for data visualization. Its color and themes can also be used along with GG plots. Let's try to change the discrete category colors. We've added these lines at the bottom of our script. As you run the script now, you can notice the change in the colors, which we did using the color factor cut. Next, we use a Tableau color. 
We've already imported the library GG themes, and let's use the tableau color with the help of scale color tableau function. Now, run the script, and we can observe the change in color in the output. Plots created can be slightly modified using the color gradient and plotting a distribution on the graph itself. Let's use the color gradient and add the code for it to our script. When we run this, we obtain the changed output. Let's plot a distribution on the graph. First, we need to calculate the mean of the price. Here, we use the mean method for it. Next, we add plotting distribution on the graph using the mid, that is, mean of the price variable of the diamond dataset. Having discussed in depth about the components in a graph building process, now let's try to understand how to create different charts and graphs using ggplot2. Dot qplot function is a basic plotting function in ggplot2, which is a wrapper for creating different types of plots. There are two options for a user, either go plotting with the qplot or ggplot function. Though it was quite long, but it was amazing. In this video, we had an introduction to ggplot and the various plots and graphs used for data visualization.